season of giving thanks, I want to thank Mrs. Powers for being a great math teacher and for being there when I needed help with math. I'm here to give thanks to uh, my teacher known as uh, Mr. McIntosh. He's a great teacher. He teaches AP Psychology, he teaches it really good. He's really nice. I really like him. He's a phenomenal teacher. He's just, he does a lot of good things that promote well, like, just promotes learning well. He just, like, it's, he's a really good teacher. If you ever wanted to take any type of AP class, I recommend going with his class because he's just, oh, spectacular teacher. By far one of the best. And if you watch this, Mr. Uh, McIntosh, have a great Thanksgiving and just continue being great. And yeah. Hi, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Kalantar. Um, he has definitely helped me with a bunch of stuff over the years. He's just an amazing teacher overall. He definitely cares about his students and I felt that on a daily basis. He always managed to make me smile. Thank you, Mrs. Dotson, for being a nice, kind, and overall great teacher this semester. Hello, uh, I just wanna say thank you to Mr. Malone for being such a great teacher. Even through these, even through these times and like, he, he does try his best. He tries his best in class every time. And I always look forward to going to this class. So I just want to say thank you to Mr. Malone once again. I just want to give a special shout out to Coach Ellis for everything he's done as a teacher and as also a coach. He's also had a great impact on my life and given me so many different lessons to get me ready for the future. So thank you so much. Appreciate you. The teacher that I'm thankful for is Miss McPherson because she's been one of the most supportive and caring people in my life so far this year and she isn't ready to give up on me even though I've already felt like I've wanted to give up on myself. The teacher I'm very thankful for is Mr. Corona because he always tries to uplift the class and he always tries to keep the conversation going even though you know, no one responds. This is my first year having him and uh, he always tries to you know, make people participate because it's like some teachers don't care that their students are not participating or showing their face and all that but he does care and he tries to make the best out of it. And I just think that's really cool from him. And yeah, he's a great teacher. One teacher that I'm thankful for is Miss Milana. She was my geometry teacher last year and she was just really nice and understanding about a lot of things. So I was very thankful that I was able to talk to her about anything if I needed to, she was always there. Um, yeah, I really liked going to her class. So I'm very thankful that she was my teacher last year. I just wanted to say how extremely thankful I am for Mrs. Garcia, our wonderful activities director at Heritage. Even while we're facing such difficult and uncertain times, Mrs. Garcia has continued to provide our school with so many opportunities and activities for each and every one of us to participate in. She's always strived to bring the best out of every person she's worked with and every student at our campus. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, Mrs. Garcia. I just wanted to say I'm thankful for Mr. Davis because he's understanding and he actually makes history kind of fun. The teacher that I'm thankful for is my Spanish 2 teacher from 10th grade, Miss Flores. Um, I'm thankful for her because, you know, even when the class was not motivated, we were all half asleep. You know, she always just motivated us and kept us entertained, having fun, interacting with each other so we could learn Spanish, and she did a good job teaching us. Also, whenever my grade got low, she was always eager to help me real quick and get it back up. So, I'm thankful for you, Miss Flores, and have a good Thanksgiving. A teacher that I'm thankful for is Mr. Jones. I feel like he was very supportive and very helpful whenever I needed him, whether it was with schoolwork or personal life. He was just always there for me and I really appreciate that. The person I am thankful for at Heritage High School is Miss Eckel. A lot of people don't know who Miss Eckel is, but she's a biology teacher and I feel like she was the only teacher I've ever had that she shared the interest that I had. And I could actually like have a conversation with her more as a friend than as a teacher, even though she she's a great teacher, absolutely wonderful teacher. But I just like to bring to everybody's attention that she's awesome. She's really cool. I know students are taking the time to thank their favorite teachers, but I just want to take the time to thank every single teacher and staff member who nonstop put effort in to make things happen. Your efforts do not go unnoticed or unappreciated. We all see the work and effort you put in every single day, and we appreciate you more than we say. 
Thank you for everything that you do to make our school as amazing as it is. Hey again, I'm Janelle. As usual, I'm here with another show that you should consider watching. Today's show is Goblin. Goblin is about a general who is cursed to become an immortal goblin. The only way to end his immortality is to find and marry his bride. The story itself is unique, taking you into a whole fantasy world that you want to learn more about. There's a 900 year old goblin, a girl who can see ghosts, a grim reaper, and an owner of a chicken restaurant. The interactions between the characters were enjoyable to watch. The way the characters' fates were intertwined with each other was interesting and heartbreaking. I especially love the stories of the two side characters who, in my opinion, stole the show. All of the cast suited their roles perfectly. The plot of Goblin spans many years and the show transitions between the past and the present several times. It leaves you wanting to know more about the characters' past and amazes you once everything comes together. Goblin is known for its stunning cinematography. Some of the parts really felt like a movie. In addition, now that we're in the middle of fall, Goblin has the perfect fall vibes if you're looking for something to watch at this time of year, as most of the scenes were filmed in fall. The music played during the show adds so much more emotion to the already emotional storyline. Be aware that this show is not at all lighthearted. There are deep lessons throughout the show that really get you thinking. It talks about fate, life, and many other things. However, there are some comical moments that provide the balance to the heavier parts of the show. With that being said, if you're looking for a nice show to watch that's a mix of a bunch of different genres, you should definitely check out Goblin. That's it for now, and thanks for watching. This document is about the departure of Flash. Flash has become less common, and today, hey, hey, there are 17% of Flash users, and it continues to use the decline. Hey, these, these open web technologies have become um, the default experience for Chrome last uh, the late last year when sites started or needing to ask permission to run Flash. Flash. Chrome will continue to uh, Chrome will continue phrasing out Flash for the next few years, first by asking in your permission to, uh, to run Flash in more situations, and eventually disabling it by default. Google will remove Flash completely from Chrome from the end of, and from toward the end of 2020. If you're using Flash today, hey, you, hey, Flash will be removed completely at the end of 2020. So, if you're wondering how this affects you, don't worry about it. I'm sure there'll be a replacement for Flash soon. Alright, so you wanted to ask me questions about college? Yeah. Yes. I went to the University of California at Irvine. Yes, yes for all four years. It was difficult to um, get used to being on my own, basically, because my my parents had moved to Maryland, and I said, I'm staying here. Uh, so then all of a sudden, you're having to you know, do your own laundry, make your own meals, do your own shopping, paying your own bills, uh, in addition to school you know, on top of that. So... That was a little difficult, so maybe it would be easier if kids stayed with their parents for the first year or two to adjust, but I got used to it. Uh, I might have, have gone to too many parties at first, <laughs> my first semester, 
and, and then I learned, oh, you can't do that. You have to, you have to use time, better time management, mm-hmm. and stay on top of your your schoolwork is the first and foremost thing. But, you know, it was a good a good school. It was big. It was like thirty something thousand students there. Uh, I was in the biology program, which was very competitive because everybody wanted to be a doctor. It was in that program, so it was difficult, but but good. Majors in biological sciences, which allows you to either go on to medical school or be a, a, a researcher, a laboratory technician, uh, or a nurse, even or a, a teacher. So at first, I was thinking to be a doctor. But then I did some volunteer work in uh, an emergency room, and after having people uh, bleed on me and go to the bathroom right next to me, and I realized, okay, maybe I don't want to be a doctor. And so uh, my my wife, who I met while going to UCI, was going to be a teacher, and uh, she suggested that I, I do that as well. And at first, I didn't listen to her, and mm-hmm. then I went on to work at a pharmaceutical company. And, but then I got laid off uh, from the pharmaceutical company, and, and she said, you can still be a teacher. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll try that. And so I tried that and enjoyed it and have been ever since for like 26 years now. I did participate, like I said, my, my first semester, first quarter, uh, too much uh, perhaps in a fraternity, uh, mm-hmm. and that messed up my grades some. And so then I, I had to stop that. Plus, it's expensive to be in the fraternity. Uh, and then I joined like a faith-based club on campus and, and met some good friends. And, and then actually, that's how I met my wife as well. Uh, like I said, time management is an important thing that it takes a while to learn. Uh, you have to learn how to juggle taking care of yourself and, and bills and school and social life. So, so that's something you have to learn to juggle. And then money management as well, because there's all kinds of places wanting you know, your money. And so you have to save it for, for books and, and living expenses. Uh, and so not be frivolous with your, your money. And um, make it where get scammed. There's lots of scams that they try to get you to sign up for in college. What else? Uh, find a, a, a close group of friends that you can you can study with, and, and that can, you can help each other. So make friends in your classes, because mm-hmm. those are the same people you'll probably see throughout your your college career, assuming you go to a four year university. Um, that's really about. Oh, and and don't forget about your parents. You know, they they like to hear from you, so make sure you stay in touch with them as well. And and they'll even be nice to you. And like, if you bring your laundry home, they'll they'll help you with your laundry. Hey, that's a baby. Babies can't talk, so they make sounds like this uh. or this. Uh. But this guy, he's a grown man, and he makes sounds like this. <laughs> this guy is Doug E. Fresh. He was born in 1966 and would go on to become one of the most historical names in beatbox history. Back then, beatboxing was not as advanced as it is now, so people would be impressed with the simple sounds and combinations that people could make. As the culture evolved, organizations and competitions were set in place to bring more attention to the new style of music. The first Beatbox Battle World Championship took place in 2005, with Joel Turner as its first winner. Over the years, more international competitions started to come up, such as the Grand Beatbox Battle and Beatbox the World. These new events brought many new beatboxers to the scene that would revolutionize how beatboxing would sound. People such as Alem, Alexino, and Karen FX would introduce new styles and sounds that were unthinkable at the time. Since then, new names such as Chung Bao, Codfish, and Napalm have completely changed what beatboxing is today, going from this to this. Beatboxing has truly changed as a music style over the years and will continue to grow as more discoveries about the wacky sounds you can make with your voice are still being found today. Hey Isaac, what are you doing? Huh? Oh nothing. Just looking at the pigs. Oh, okay.
Uh, where's the pigs? I may have opened the gate, and the pigs might have just ran away. Dude, we have to get those pigs back. Okay, okay. I saw it run back here. Okay, and don't let Mr. Daly know we lost them. We have to get it back quick. So, how are we supposed to get them back? Hmm, hold on. Where'd you get this? I just went into creative mode. This gives me an idea. I just thought of an idea. What is it? Well, since we have these pigs, I think we should race with them. All right, say less. Say less, um, race pigs? What? No, I mean, yeah, like I agree with you. So, do you want me to still say less or? Forget it. I know what I want when I win. Well, what do you mean? Faith, if faith gets to be mine. Whoa. <clears throat> First of all, faith isn't something to be had. Second of all? And second of all, I think she's into me, not you. She even asked for some of my food. Pretty clear hint right there. Hey, could I help? What? Who are you? I'm Jaden. I know what you guys are planning to do. Oh, do you? Yeah, and I know exactly what you guys can do for the race. You guys will start here on the bottom floor and go up the stairs, down the hallways to the end of the right side of Washington, end up at the bottom doors and race back here from the bottom floor and proceed through the PE area to the football field and do a lap around the track and head back here. Sounds good enough for me. Sounds good enough for me. Get ready, set, go. Dang, how? They stop right there and they're gone. Come on, stupid pig. See you at the finish line. Isaac won. That's not fair. Not my problem. Now I gotta find out what to wear. Why? For my date with Faith. I'm gonna take her to my favorite place, Home Depot. Yeah, whatever. Thanks, by the way. Yeah, no problem. Well, I gotta go now. See you guys later. A few inches later. What's this? You're gonna lose this one. Nah. Afraid of losing? I'm afraid of losing. I'll win again just to prove that I can win again. Sure. Then we have a deal? Deal.
What's good, Patriots? I'm David Yerger, and I'm back with another super special workout video. Today, we're going to be doing the core, you know, in between your pectoral and your pelvic area, okay? So, you guys may be wondering, David, why do I need to do my core? And let me tell you guys, getting it right just really gives you better balance and stability. You know, you won't be wobbling around everywhere, even doing like sports and stuff, you won't be, you know, off balance, okay? The next thing it does is gives you better posture, uh, it helps you straighten out that back, and yeah, just when you're sitting and walking, your posture will be better. The next thing it does is increase confidence because who does not like a good set of abs, you know? All right, well, let's get straight into it. The first workout is the plank. Now, this is widely considered as one of the best workouts for your core, okay? And it's really self-explanatory. You're just gonna get on the floor like a plank, um, get on, your forearms right it's kind of like the push-up position except you're just getting on your forearms instead of your palms so just get on the floor flat like a plank sit there for one minute i know it's gonna burn but you have to get through it just just do the plank man it's, it's worth it okay for the second exercise we're going to do a sort of alteration of the crunches okay um everybody should know what crunches are you just put your hands behind your head and you lifting your head up a little bit well for this one we're going to just alternate and what i mean by that is you're going to put your hands on your head lay down like normal but you're going to put your your right elbow on your left knee and then your left elbow on your right knee and just keep switching like that and we're going to want to do 50 of those in a row and that should really get the the core burning and going and yep for the last exercise, we're going to be doing bicycle kicks, which uh, I don't know if this is exactly what they're called, but that's what I always call them. So you're just gonna lay flat on your back and move each of your legs in alteration 50 times, and yeah. So you're gonna wanna do each of these exercises three times to really get the maximum effect. So that was this episode of your super special workout regimen. Uh, go get that call right. I want to see all the six patches when we return to school. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Good day, Patriots. Hope everyone is having a lovely quarantine. I'm your host, Corazón Hernandez. Today, we'll be making a lovely pumpkin pie. What you will be needing for this pie are graham crackers, pumpkin puree, cornstarch, white sugar, cream cheese, evaporated milk, eggs, pumpkin pie spice, brown sugar, and butter. Don't forget to preheat your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. First, you crush your graham crackers with a food processor or just by stuffing them in a baggie and crushing them. Mix your melted butter and graham crackers until they are kinetic sand consistency. Once the graham cracker mix finishes mixing together, you will stuff them into this. I covered the bottom of my pans with butter and flour so I could pop them out easily. Now once you have finished filling in your pie molds, you will stick this in the oven for 5 minutes. Now on to the actual pie part. I prefer to put in the liquids first as they tend to mix much easier compared to the rest. But if you just mix them all together and you throw them in the, in the blender, it's the same thing doesn't really matter. Then I put some, then I put the milk in, along with the eggs. to the dry ingredients since everything is, is clump free and even if there are any clumps don't worry about it it'll it'll melt once it's in the oven so don't stress too much if it doesn't melt which is why it's better to use room temperature ingredients especially with the cream cheese once everything is done mixing you will start pouring into the little pans Now these are the finished products once you put the puree in the pie crusts. 
and you stick them in the oven for roughly 30 minutes to an hour. Roughly right now they should be ready. As you see when you pat them, they don't bounce too much and they don't jiggle, kind of like jello. Instead they're just poofy. Not to mention they're also cracking. So this is the perfect time to take them out. And now your pies are done. And you can leave them like this or you can add a little topping. And I made a sour cream topping with vanilla and sugar. And here you have finished pies. You can enjoy them this way or stick them in the fridge to enjoy them later. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I will see you all later. What's good with y'all? Young. Boys. And females. Hey, man. I'm back with another, I said I'm back with another one. A banger for y'all. All right, y'all, welcome to Shoe Mania. Y'all know me as your host, Riley McLean, other known, known as Riley Bass. And of course, of course, I'm back with another banger and another great, great, great guest. My boy, my brother, my man from another mother, Vince, the only one in Vanderpool. Everybody give it up for him, man. I've been on here for a cool minute, man. And honestly, man, he went to Heritage last year and now he's a, he's, he's at UCSB. Yes, sir, man. How you doing, man? Introduce yourself, man. Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, what's up, y'all? I'm Vince. Uh, just recently graduated from Heritage, like Riley said. USCSB class of 2024, um, but more importantly, certified sneakerhead. So that's why we're here. Already know. All right, man. So, you know, I talked to you a little about the show, got you on now, and I got to let you know, man. We talk here about sneakers, sneakers, but that's not it. We also talk about life in general. You know what I'm saying? We talk about life in general in the snow. All my all my peeps who watch this, they know all about it. They they've been watching my last couple videos and they've been really good. My last my last episode was with Rosie. You know who Rosie is. She's been Rosie. We talked about the college experience that she's still in a uh, senior as myself, just like myself. But she also got a scholarship. So we talked about different stuff like that. And with you, you are a current a current college student. Sure. Sure. You're a current college student. And my first question is, with all this COVID stuff going on, how is it? How would be, how is like your experience with this? It's been um, a little surreal just in the fact that it doesn't feel like college. Just like maybe, you know, kids doing online high school, it doesn't feel like school, a lot of them would say. It, it almost feels like, um, I mean, the, the face, the, the Zoom calls in, in that, it's, it's great to engage, but the, the school atmosphere is just not there at all. Mm, absolutely. And that's, that's honestly, I can honestly say the same thing here. I know that college is a step forward of high school for sure. I know it's a lot more responsibilities and things like that, but I can honestly agree with you with it comes to the aspect of the COVID kind of messing everything up. Cause trust me, it's our senior year. And like they said, senior year is supposed to be your funnest, like your most fun year. Like the fear that you're right. having more fun. And honestly, it's not what I wish it could be. Of course, I wanted to go to football games, have fun with my friends, you know? do heritage things, go to the in and out after the games, all the different stuff, you know, but man, it is what it is, man. It happens, things like this happen, but honestly, I feel like this pushed me, even though I've always been pushed through my parents and stuff when it comes to grades and stuff like that, I feel like it pushed me hard, you get what I'm saying? When it comes right. to grades and, and, and honestly, I don't mind, I don't mind being at home majority of the time. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you don't get to do, but you know, it is what it is. I agree. I think um, as far as the academic aspect, it does it does push me a little more, and it, oh, it allows me to focus. Just being able to have all my schoolwork right here on on my laptop or right here, right by my side, like pretty much twenty four seven. There's really no distractions. I mean, there's home distractions, but we've been home for months now. You know what I mean? I'm sure a lot of people are running out of things to do. So I think it's um key for people to prioritize school i know that's what i've been doing and it's just with this whole quarantine thing and the fact that it's still going on and that we've gotten used to it 
I feel a lot of people have found avenues that's in doors that they never would have opened before, whether it be hobbies or pushing themselves academically, more workouts at, you know, whatever it may be. I think although we lost a big chunk of, of uh, high school years and early college years, I think other avenues and other aspects are opening up for people. I feel you, man. I feel you. And that's like, that's why I like talking with you, man. Cause you always, you always keep it real every time. Honestly. So now that we got that out the way, man, talking about just talking about life in general, just a little bit, you know what I'm saying? We're going to move on to the next topic. The main attraction of this show. Let's talk about sneakers, man. And yeah. we're going to have a little different, a little different layout this week. You get what I'm saying? Because I know you personally, and I know you, a lot of my hosts on the show, they, they know about sneakers, but you, you, you know a lot about sneakers. I know you picked up some recent, recent heat. Before, before we get into the aspect of sneakers and things, is there any heat that you have that you want to show off? Real quick, you can have your one shoe in your closet right now. <laughs> in your closet right now, like trust me, I have some. I'm out. I, I can like, like a go, like a go to. Like I need to show you this. That you need to show me. You need to show me this heat. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me see something, man. Let me see something. All right, so uh, I was. It, this was a toss up. The just, just kind of glancing back over, but. Okay. Uh, the one, the one that I didn't pick was one that I feel like a lot of our peers have already seen. This one, I feel like uh, not a lot of people know that I have these. I mean, it's not a, a loud shoe, but it's a shoe that when you see it, you know it. Oh yeah. And if you're a sneakerhead, you know the meaning of it even more. We got right here, 2016 OG bread ones. Woo! Dead stock. Woo! Lick the bottoms if you need to. Oh. I mean, it's a, oh. cl I mean, it's a classic, man. Classic. Mm -hmm. Classic. If you're figure, you gotta have ones. Maybe not these, cause these run you a little bit, right. but you gotta have some ones on you, man. Right. It's got the, yeah. the date from when they first came out on them, size 12. These are my babies, man. I, I can't I can't undes them, man. I gotta keep them clean, man. They just a and staple I, for my collection. Oh my goodness, they're so beautiful. I'm just looking at them, man. They're so not, I, and the thing that I also, I know when it comes to sneakerheads and people who are sneaker culture, who love buying sneakers and getting sneakers and just collecting them in general. There are a couple of shoes that sneakerhead that they would say is a must. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like a staple. And it's for sure ones. Yeah. And I've heard a lot. It's for sure the G Fazos. And if you oh, are, boy, thank you. I was gonna say thank you. Are, you. If you are a real sneakerhead, you know what G Fazos are. In other terms, Got you know, G Fazos are Air Force ones. And when I mean ones, I mean the low tops. You can have the high tops. High tops are fire too. Don't get yeah, me wrong. I got, I got a couple. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The low top G Fazos, which are Air Force ones, and me personally, I would say the all white ones. And it can be any, but it honestly it can be any of them because uh, there's a lot of styles that are crazy. Like there's one shoe that I feel like has a lot of styles, but I feel like the Air Force ones has more styles than the Vans shoe. You know how Vans has right. a different styles, but I feel like. The Air Force Ones has a lot of different styles that can compete with any other shoe, to be honest with you. They have- right. and I just want to say this to, to uh, whoever's watching, like if you're trying to learn about this or get into this, a fa I mean, G Fatals are common. I mean, you see them like every day. You see a lot of influencers, they're wearing Jordan Ones. Don't let that discourage you. Don't think you're basic because you have those. That Everyone has those because those are a staple in your wardrobe. You know what I mean? Whether you wear them every day or cause you know, maybe that's the only shoe you want to spend money on, or maybe it's just one you have in your rotation, whatever it may be, don't feel discouraged. I mean, I keep those all the time. It's just something about the culture where you gotta have, it's a must have. And that's why everyone has them. So I don't look at it as basic. I look at it as, as, a, as a must have. True. I know, I know that you played basketball a lot last year. Me and my boy, by the way, me and my boy Vince were on bar last year. He went, we went here, man. We were, we were, playoffs was fun, everything. Yours fun, man. One shoe that is your favorite hooping shoe. What could you say on the top of your head right now? I gotta go damn near or pretty much any Kobe, any Kobe model. Um, there are some exceptions. Uh, 
quick edit. Should I show some right now or just, just talk about? I'm gonna do it like this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. When you can get through the episode a little bit, you get what I'm saying? I'm gonna do it like this because I know you have a lot of heat. You could probably show it'd probably take up the whole thing. But I'm yeah, gonna do it. Right. All right, cool. Do it like this for the viewers, you feel what I'm saying? I'm gonna do it like this so it can be a little bit more clear and everything like that. So yeah. those are those I'm gonna say those are some Kobe five prontos. If you know what those are, oh yeah, you're on top. So I'm yeah. gonna like Okay. All right, so cool. So yeah, pretty much any Kobe model, just because I know that with Kobe's, uh, especially when he was playing, traction was was big. You know, being light on on, on his feet and the fact the the ankle support was great. You know, after he had a couple ankle injuries, they adjusted his shoe for that. So the the ankle support, especially with some of the highs, on top of that with the traction, lightweight, they you just can't go wrong with a pair of Kobe's. Exactly. There's no, there's no, you can't go wrong at all. And I've had a couple of my career, man. I, I had some, some all-star sixes. My favorite Kobe's of all time to me, in my personal opinion, are these sixes. I love Kobe sixes. The, I just love the print of the mama print, everything, the snake print. It's just, beautiful. Those are immaculate, immaculate. It's crazy. Those some, those some cold kicks that she was talking about from last season, man. I, I, I mess with it. I mess with it. I mess with it. But now going back to talking about the class of 2020 year, how was it when it came to the drive through graduation? What was your experience? Uh, at first, leading up to it, it was a lot of confusion on how it would go down and kind of, you know, second doubts and wishing we could have had a real graduation, obviously, because, um, you know, during May, June, COVID was still, you know, very fresh and very new experience. But um, once, you know, you wake up on that morning, uh, I got my graduation songs playing. You know, you put on the cap and gown. Um, you get in the car and you get on your way to Heritage for one last ride. I mean, whether there's mass or not, you know, stadium filled or not, man, you can't help but to feel that excitement. And when we pulled up through the drive-through, uh, the little, you know, stage area, and, and I got out and just to be able to walk that stage, I mean, I don't care what stage it is, just to know that I did it. I survived the four years and I had a great time. It was just, uh, it was a great experience. And having, you know, a lot of staff and teachers there, my family there, I mean, you can't really ask for much more considering the situation. And when we drove off, you know, we drove off to go take some pictures and whatnot. And I couldn't help but to just feel proud and accomplished. I mean, it was, whether whether it's social distancing or whether it's you know the traditional graduation there's just like a an energy in the air you know talking to all your friends like we really did this so it's a day regardless of what happened I'll, I'll never forget it that's the way you just explained it right now was actually like i never even got to ask anybody the question on how the graduation was but it seems that it was really nice it seems that it wasn't even like it didn't, no matter, like you said, no matter who was there, I don't care if Michael Jackson came back and watched the graduation. No matter who was there, it still was a surreal feeling. Right. I don't know what it sounds like. And that makes me actually very excited. <laughs> that makes me kind of like very excited until the graduation time. But now is a time for me to enjoy what I actually at least have. You get what I'm saying? Enjoy my, uh, enjoy my uh, months of being a senior. And just just enjoy it, man. Enjoy it to the fullest, man, because it's gonna come quicker than you think it is. You know, because like I said, now I just it's crazy because I can I can remember my eighth grade year like that, like it was yesterday. I can remember yeah. that. like to think of it like I'm a dang, I'm a senior, bro. Like, like and I know how you, in your perspective, like dang, bro, like I'm a freshman in college. Like, isn't that crazy? I cannot. I mean, I can remember the first day of high school like it was yesterday. Whenever I'm driving by the mountains and and seeing the school, I always think like one day is gonna be like my last drive there, and then you know it finally happened. But just real quick, I mean, to whoever's watching, you know, seniors or if you're in just in high school, uh, to like what Riley said, man, just thrive and and work with what you got to the fullest. I mean. Whether you're at home, you know, doing it virtually, or you find you get to do some events out there, at the end of the day, you're still in high school. And that's still one of the primes of, you know, our early lives. So just go out there and, and do what you can and and live it up, man. Cause just like Riley said, like that, it's gonna be done. 
Okay, y'all. We are coming to an end, but listen, I'm not going to end the episode off just like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this is a special guest who has special knowledge as myself when it comes to sneakers. You know what I'm saying? All right, so we're going to end it off by letting the crowd see what your top six sneakers are right now. Six. The all four right. yours, go ahead. All right, all right, all right. Uh, quick heat warning for y'all, especially y'all newbies, man. This is uh, a lot of years of collecting, you know, a lot of saving. Um, whatever it is, if you if you want to go get a sneaker, man, just just go go for it, work hard for it, save for it. it. Personally, I think it's worth it to you know have whether one sneaker or a whole collection. Let's get into it. All right, this is a no order because that would that would stress me out. But uh, first one. got to start off with the Jordan. It's only right, you know, man, jump man. You got some red cement threes on them. Something light, wore these a lot senior year. Um, one thing about this shoe real quick, they stay in good condition. These keep up. I wear these a lot and they still look almost brand new. So Air Jordan three. Next, we gonna switch it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a big Adidas fan, checks over stripes, but personally got the, mm -hmm. Got the zebras here, 350s. Um, these used to have a lot of hype. Now they kind of cooled off. So if you want to get a pair, this is a pair to get. I feel like this is a shoe you don't really see in malls a lot, especially, you know, in this area, we don't have a lot of heat. But if you go on online retailers or like go like an aftermarket, you can pick up a pair of 350s for, for not as much as you may think. This was a shoe that I just, I just love the look. When they first came out, I wasn't big on Adidas, but this was a shoe I had to have. So uh, Zebra 350s for number two. Number three, I'm so happy you had me on, Riley, so I can use this platform to put you guys on. This is my unconventional pick here at number three. Um, this is the, the Converse Golf LaFleur Molten Lava. All right, now a lot of y'all probably haven't seen these and that is okay. You don't wear these with sweatpants, man. You don't you don't wear these to, you know, before your basketball game. These are a, a dress shirt, you know, with the chinos on, some, some thrifted fits, the red and blue. I wish the camera's not doing it justice. These colors pop, okay? If you know Tyler the Creator, you probably know these. Personally, I like the way One Stars fit and look versus like a Chuck Taylor or versus like a, a slip-on van. So if that's your avenue, you know what I'm saying? Got the, got the flower bottom. I think this is a very bright shoe, a unique shoe. Any any one star in general um, is something, uh, a different avenue, highly suggest. So that's my number three. Number four, we was talking about ones earlier. This is my second pair of ones. Um, got these last late last year. We got the UNC to Chicago fearless ones with the patent leather, with the white laces. Kids, kids, use your extra laces. These came with black laces. I don't need that. Let me get the tidy whities on. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful shoe, beautiful shoe. I got these late last year, so they were just a little over retail, um, which I was fine with because I think it's a beautiful shoe. I got these in North Carolina and you know, the UNC color, I just figured something to remember the trip with. Uh, ones are going up. So if that's a shoe that you're interested in, you know, buyers beware with the prices going up. If you can find one, you know, for in, in, your, in your budget or a little below it, like definitely a must have. I mean, any Jordan one. Oh. My fault, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just want to let you know this right now. I wanted to say something that I really liked about that shoe that I actually personally seen. I saw a video where it was like an introduction. The thing that I like that most people don't understand what the UNC to Chicago means, it's kind of common sense onto, I think a sneakerhead's point of view, but if you can see, show us you real quick. It starts from when he was in college, of course. UNC, that's the UNC baby blue colors, you know what I'm saying? And it was white, black in, baby blue then it goes into his insane stat years on the chicago bulls one of the greatest of all time red black and white 
that's why I called the UNC Black. And I seen a video that was so cold that actually introduced that whole thing, and it was mind blowing. My fault. Go ahead. Do you? Man. Most definitely, yeah. So great story on them. Once again, if you can afford to get a pair of ones, highly suggest you do that. Uh, coming into our last two here. This is one that I've been uh, showing off a lot, uh, mostly because these were uh, uh, a pretty penny. Uh, I, I used a lot of my savings on this. Uh, I'm not going to lie. You know what I mean? Like, I, I try my best to, to keep up with the shoes and whatnot. Um, this was a graduation gift to myself uh, a, a couple months ago. Picked these up. Travis Scott, Cactus Jack, Air Force One. Oh, uh, comes with the shroud. I took the shroud off, put on the little cream laces, keep it a more subtle look. A shoe like this, if you're gonna go all in on a shoe, if you're gonna put it all out there, I suggest you go with a collab and hear me out. Nike mass produces a lot of Jordan ones, mass produces a lot of, you know, basic Air Forces, but with these collab shoes, there's only a certain number. And when they're collabing with someone like, let's say a Travis Scott or, you know, a Yeezy comes out with Adidas, they're going to put quality into the shoe. I mean, it's got the little belt buckle here. It's It came with like four pairs of laces, the shroud, premium materials, got suede on it, new buck. This is a shoe that I will have probably for the rest of my life. I'm trying to keep them in good condition, but also, you know, wear your sneaker kids, uh, wear your sneakers. So this is this is a shoe that I'm just proud of. This is one of my, my holy grails. Uh, big Travis Scott fan, so I had to get these. Um, Definitely a beautiful shoe. Happy to show it off. We got one more, right? One more. All right. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna I'm gonna end it off where it all started. Uh, this is not a a flashy shoe. It is. Uh, it's not a big shoe. It's, it's rather small. This was uh, my first ever Air Jordan that I've, I've ever had. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you see sneaker shop and they always talk about their first, you know, pair uh, of Jays. Uh, this one, when I got them in, I think like fourth grade, I had no clue what they were. You know, I got surprised with them. I don't even think my mom knew what they were. I was just like, okay, cool. Like Air Jordan, I know that guy. Um, and now looking back on them, they just have so much sentimental value to me. We got the Air Jordan 7 Bordeaux. Bordeaux, hey. You know, like a size nine. You know what I'm saying? It's not no, it's not no bread 11 or nothing, but these was, these was my, my my babies, man. I I wore them into the ground though. Luckily, I cleaned them up a bit, but I used to wear these on, uh, a lot. Classic shoe, classic design. Sevens really slept on, man. Really slept on. Um, overlooked a lot. Clean little tongue. I mean, this just screams '90s to me, man. You got the they got the mismatched bottom, the mismatched tongue. Air Jordan Seven. Can't go wrong. This was my first pair, and this is something that will never leave my collection. And it uh. Holding near and dear to my heart. Definitely, y'all. Hey, hey, man. You blew it off the roof, man. You really uh, blew it. You I had it the one time. Come on, man. Shoe mania. You off the roof. Thank you for having me. I hope I set the bar for your future guests. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna be tuning in to these. This yeah. was this was fun, man. And uh, gonna ask for a better hope. This was very fun. And like I say, y'all, y'all know I usually get the intro, uh, the. How the intro? I know y'all rocking with it. Now we gotta, we gotta get a little designer in here while we do the. the okay. We gotta get okay, you just stun on me. Like I said, come from your boy Riley Bands. It's my boy Vince, and this is this is Shoe Mania. Man, we're out. Rocket. <laughs>